My wife and I have been RV camping for a long time, like 15 years. We usually go to cool places in California, like the desert and the forest. This one weekend, we thought it'd be fun to take our four-year-old son with us for a camping trip in the desert. Little did we know it would turn into the scariest night of our lives. Everything was going fine until our RV got flat tires in the middle of nowhere. It was so dark, and there were no other people around. Just us, the stars, and the creepy quietness of the desert. We tried to fix the tires, but it was tough. That's when this old, beat-up truck pulled up and five guys got out. They looked rough, like they'd been through some hard times. At first we thought maybe they could help us out, but something felt off. The men approached us and things got really scary. They started beating up my husband, and I was terrified. I tried to scream, but nothing came out. One of the guys grabbed my hair and pulled it so hard. It hurt a lot, and I was so scared for our little boy inside the RV. Just when things seemed like they couldn't get any worse, our son came out crying. The men stopped everything and just stared at him. It was so weird. They all had these creepy smiles on their faces. One of the guys spoke up and said, You guys are lucky because we respect kids. We'll let you go this time. I couldn't believe it. They hopped back into their truck and drove off into the darkness. We were shaken, but... At least we were alive. I couldn't stop thinking about what could have happened if our son hadn't come out when he did. Those guys were dangerous, and who knows what they were planning to do. We were so grateful that our little boy was okay. We called the police right away, and they've been looking for those men ever since. It's been a while, but we still get nightmares thinking about that night. It's hard to trust people now, especially in the middle of nowhere. We never expected our family RV camping trip to turn into a horror story, but it taught us to be extra careful, even in the most peaceful places. Now whenever we go RV camping, we're always on edge, making sure we're not alone and keeping an eye out for anything strange. It's sad that we can't enjoy the outdoors like we used to, but our priority is keeping our family safe. We hope those guys get caught so that no one else has to go through what we went through in the dark, quiet, desert night. Once upon a time, my boyfriend, Jake, and I decided to go on a trip to a mysterious forest in California. We heard stories about its beauty, but also about strange things happening there. My boyfriend and I will either call off work or put on vaction to go RV camping every month to explore the wilderness. We thought it would be an exciting adventure to take our lovely RV out camping. Little did we know that our trip would turn into a haunting experience. We arrived at the forest, surrounded by tall trees that seemed to whisper secrets to each other. We park our RV and set up the canopy and stuff for the day. The air was chilly, sending shivers down my spine. As we walked deeper into the woods to check out the place, the sunlight struggled to break through the thick canopy of leaves. It felt like we were stepping into a world untouched by time. Everything started off well, with us laughing and taking pictures. However, as the day went on, Jake began acting strangely. He kept looking over his shoulder as if something was following us. I asked him if he was okay, but he just brushed it off, saying he was tired. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting eerie shadows, Jake's behavior became even more peculiar. He started muttering to himself, his eyes darting around nervously. I tried to comfort him, but he seemed distant, as if he were in a world of his own. Suddenly, without any warning, Jake took off, running into the dark forest. I called out his name, my heart pounding in my chest. I chased after him, stumbling over roots and branches. The forest seemed to come alive with strange sounds, whispers, rustles, and distant footsteps that echoed through the trees. I called out to Jake again, my voice trembling with fear. The darkness swallowed him, and I was left alone in the chilling silence. Panic set in as I realized I was lost in the heart of the mysterious forest. I searched for Jake for hours, but there was no sign of him. Exhausted and scared, 
I decided to find my way back to the RV. The forest had transformed into a maze of shadows, making it nearly impossible to navigate. Every rustle of leaves and the snap of a twig made me jump. It felt like unseen eyes were watching me in the darkness. Eventually, after what felt like an eternity, I stumbled upon the familiar path that led back to the RV. I contacted the park authorities, but they couldn't find any trace of him either. It was as if he had vanished without a trace, leaving behind only the chilling memory of his sudden disappearance. Days turned into weeks, and there was still no sign of him. Haunted by the memories of that night, I couldn't shake off the feeling that something supernatural had taken him. I couldn't sleep, constantly replaying the events in my mind. Desperation led me to seek help from locals who knew the forest's dark history. They spoke of ancient legends, of spirits that roamed the woods seeking lost souls. Some believed that those who disappeared were trapped in a parallel world, unable to find their way back. It sent shivers down my spine, realizing that Jake might be lost in a realm beyond our understanding. To this day, my boyfriend Jake remains missing, and the forest holds on to its secrets. I can't forget the fear in his eyes and the mysterious force that drove him away. The experience has left me with a deep sense of unease, a constant reminder that some mysteries are best left untouched, hidden in the shadows of the unknown. The Arizona forest was deep, with towering trees that blocked out most of the moonlight. My family and I parked our RV in a secluded spot, surrounded by nature's eerie whispers. The first night was normal. We roasted marshmallows, told stories, and huddled around the campfire. On the second night, my brother and I decided to have some fun. We cracked open a few cans of soda and sat around a big campfire. Laughter echoed through the silent woods as we shared jokes and memories. Everything seemed fine until we heard a strange rustling in the dark. At first, we brushed it off as an animal, maybe a curious raccoon or a wandering deer. But as we laughed and chatted, the rustling grew louder and our smiles faded. That's when we saw it. Emerging from the shadows of the trees, a creature with the face of a wolf, but a body like a person. It stood on two feet, its long arms dangling by its sides. We all froze, staring at this bizarre creature standing just twenty feet away. Its eyes glowed dimly white like tiny lights in the darkness. Fear gripped us as we tried to make sense of what we were seeing. The creature seemed to be studying us, and we couldn't take our eyes off it. Dad, always the protector, grabbed his shotgun. He fired a warning shot into the air, shouting for the creature to leave or face the consequences. But the creature didn't flinch. It just stood there, staring at us with those eerie, glowing eyes. Desperation and fear filled the air as Dad fired another shot, the loud bang echoing through the silent forest. He threatened to kill the creature if it didn't go away. Still, the creature remained unmoved, a silent sentinel in the night. Time stood still as we faced this otherworldly being. The campfire flickered, casting eerie shadows that danced around us. Dad, now more determined, fired another shot. The creature finally responded, turning around slowly, its long arms swaying in the darkness. As it walked away, we could hear the leaves crunching beneath its feet, each step a haunting reminder of the supernatural encounter we had just witnessed. The creature disappeared into the blackness of the forest, leaving us in stunned silence. We sat there for what felt like hours, trying to process the unexplainable events. The once warm and inviting woods now felt cold and threatening. The crackling fire seemed feeble against the unknown dangers lurking in the shadows. From that night on, the memory haunted us. We couldn't shake off the fear that gripped our hearts. The forest, once a place of adventure, became a realm of nightmares. Even the thought of RV camping in that Arizona wilderness sent shivers down our spines. To this day, the mystery of that creature remains unsolved. Was it a guardian of the forest or something far more sinister? We may never know. But one thing is certain, the fear that consumed us that night will forever linger in the deepest corners of our minds, warning us of the unknown that dwells in the heart of the Arizona forest.
It was a dark and stormy night when my four friends and I decided to go on a road trip in our old RV. We were looking for adventure and excitement, but little did we know we were in for the scariest night of our lives. The rain was pouring down like cats and dogs as we drove down a desolate road surrounded by dense woods. The wind howled through the trees, making eerie sounds that sent shivers down my spine. The headlights of our RV cut through the darkness, revealing twisted branches and shadows that seemed to dance in the night. As we continued on our journey, the atmosphere inside the RV became tense. We laughed nervously, trying to shake off the feeling of unease that had settled upon us. The road seemed to stretch on forever with no signs of civilization in sight. Suddenly, with a loud pop, the RV sputtered and jerked to a halt. Panic set in as we realized we were stranded in the middle of nowhere with no cell service to call for help. We decided to investigate the issue, grabbing flashlights and stepping out into the rain-soaked night. The hood of the RV creaked open, and we huddled around, trying to make sense of the engine trouble. It was raining way too hard, but one of my friends tapped my shoulder for me to look over the forest. It was a big, dilapidated mansion with dim lights on. We ran over to the mansion to see if they had any cell service. When we got there, its windows were shattered, and the wind whispered through the broken panes. Against our better judgment, we decided to enter the mansion, hoping to find shelter or some clue about where we were. The air inside was thick with dust, and the creaking floorboards added to the eerie ambiance. Flickering candles lined the hallway, casting unsettling shadows on the peeling wallpaper. We cautiously explored room after room, each revealing more signs of abandonment and decay. In the living room, we discovered an old photo album. As we flipped through its pages, we saw pictures of a family that had once lived in the mansion. Their faces wore expressions of happiness, but there was something haunting about their eyes. The last page of the album sent chills down our spines, a picture of the same family, but their faces were twisted in agony, as if captured in the midst of some unspeakable horror. We were about to leave the mansion, when the wailing sound echoed again, this time much closer. Took out all our flashlights. We followed the chilling cries to the basement. What we saw in there will give us nightmares for life. Inside the basement was the family in the photo that we saw earlier. Their bodies were all lying side by side on the ground, and all their faces were rotten. We couldn't believe our eyes. We got out of that place so fast, back to our RV, and to our surprise, the engine started, and we drove out of that place so fast. When we got to the main highway and called the police, we took them to the mansion. We told them what we saw, but somehow the mansion was nowhere to be found. To this day, the memory of that night haunts my dreams. The ghostly wails, the twisted faces in the photo album and the body in the basement are chilling reminders of the horror we encountered on that dark and stormy night in the desolate woods. It was a dark and quiet night. Me and my friends were inside our RV parked in the middle of nowhere. The only sound was the crickets singing outside. We were having a good time, laughing and sharing stories, not knowing that something really scary was about to happen. Suddenly, we heard a strange noise outside. It was like footsteps, but heavier. We all looked at each other, feeling a bit uneasy. I went to the window and peeked through the curtains. My heart skipped a beat when I saw three older men approaching our RV. I quickly whispered to my friends, Guys, there are strangers outside. We all huddled together, not sure what to do. The RV was our safe haven, but it didn't feel that way anymore. The atmosphere turned tense like the air before a storm. Without warning, the door burst open. The strangers were inside, and fear gripped us like icy fingers. One of them had a wicked-looking knife in his hand. My friend, who was closest to the door, tried to block their way, but the man with the knife attacked. I heard my friend scream as the blade sank into his shoulder. Blood spurted out, staining the floor. Panic set in. We needed to do something, anything to survive. One of my friends, quick on his feet, grabbed a pistol we had for emergencies. 
He aimed it at the intruders, his hands shaking but determined. He shouted at them to get out, but they just stared back, their eyes filled with malice. In that terrifying moment, my friend pulled the trigger. The loud bang echoed in the small space and suddenly there was a mess everywhere. One of the men crumpled to the floor, groaning in pain. The others, shocked by the sudden turn of events, grabbed their friend who got shot and ran for their lives, disappearing into the darkness. We were left in shock, our hearts pounding in our chests. Blood dripped from my injured friend's shoulder, and the metallic scent filled the air. The RV felt like a crime scene, a place that was once safe but is now tainted by fear and violence. We called the police immediately, and they arrived shortly after. They searched the area, but the strangers had vanished into the woods like ghosts. The only evidence left was the blood stains in our RV, a chilling reminder of the night our peaceful gathering turned into a nightmare. Days turned into weeks, and the police continued their search for the men who had attacked us. We cooperated as best we could, providing descriptions and any details we could remember. The wound on my friend's shoulder healed, but the emotional scars lingered a constant reminder of the danger that had invaded our space. As time passed, the fear gradually subsided, but we never forgot that night. The woods held the secrets of those mysterious men, and the police were determined to bring them to justice. We lived with the uncertainty, wondering if they were still out there, lurking in the shadows. The RV, once a symbol of adventure and freedom, became a symbol of resilience, we took extra precautions, always looking over our shoulders, never fully at ease. The open road lost some of its charm, overshadowed by the lingering fear of the unknown. To this day, the police are still on the lookout for those strangers who disappeared into the woods. The case remains open, a haunting mystery that refuses to be solved. And as we continue our journey, we can't help but wonder if they are watching waiting for the right moment to emerge from the darkness once again. It was a spooky night when me and my buddies took our RV to a campsite. The sun was saying goodbye and we hurried to set up our cozy RV. There were five of us, excited to have a good time. One of my friends and I got a craving for some cold beer, so we decided to dash to a liquor store nearby, just about 20 minutes away. We drove through the dark roads, chatting and laughing, not realizing that something strange was about to happen. We reached the liquor store, grabbed our beers, and headed back to the campsite, thinking it was just a quick trip. As we returned, things got weird. Our friends were panicking and crying. They looked at us like we were ghosts or something. Confused, we asked them what was going on. That's when they dropped a bomb on us. They said we had been missing for a day. We couldn't believe it. We thought they were pulling a prank, but the fear in their eyes told a different story. They were angry, thinking we had left without a word, not answering calls or anything. We were shocked. We quickly checked our phones, thinking they were messing with us. But the date on our phones confirmed their story. It was like we had skipped a whole day. We were baffled. How did we miss an entire day? Was it some kind of time glitch? Trying to calm everyone down, we explained that we had only gone to the liquor store and been away for just an hour. We had no clue how a whole day slipped away without us knowing. It was like a spooky mystery we couldn't solve. The campsite, once filled with excitement, now felt eerie. Our friends were scared, and so were we. The atmosphere was thick with confusion, and the crackling campfire didn't offer much comfort. We tried to make sense of the situation, but no explanation seemed to fit. As the night went on, the questions kept piling up. Was it a time glitch, or did something more mysterious happen? We couldn't shake off the feeling of unease. The shadows around the campsite seemed to dance in a sinister way, and every rustle in the bushes made us jump. Days turned into nights, and we couldn't shake off the weirdness. We kept looking at our phones, hoping to find an answer. But the missing day remained a puzzle. The woods that felt like a friend during the day turned into a haunting presence at night. We tried to enjoy the rest of our camping trip, but the uneasiness lingered. The missing day became a creepy tale we shared around the campfire. 
Every crackle and snap seemed to echo the mystery we couldn't solve. To this day, the memory of that strange night haunts us. We still don't know what happened to that missing time. Was it a time glitch, a mysterious force, or just a bizarre twist in the fabric of reality? The answers elude us, leaving behind a chilling story of a camping trip gone awry.